Here's what's going on, folks. We're doing Elk Talk Live from the national headquarters of the Wild Sheep Foundation right out here in Bozeman, Montana. And the reason we had to do that, we just moved into our new office about a week ago. And we are having problems getting fiber optic pulled into our building. So we're hijacking internet Wi-Fi from all of our friends, including one of our great friends, Wild Sheep Foundation. So we're going to see if we can make this work. Uh-oh, how do I mute this thing? Turn the, turn the audio down. There you go, Randy. Ha. Oh, we got all kinds of people here. So we're on episode number 57 of Elk Talk Live. It is application season, right? It's January. We're going to talk about hunting elk every year. Every year, you should go hunting elk. And between now and when we get done talking about all of these states and all these applications, you're going to know how you can hunt elk every year. So remember, Elk Talk Live is brought to you free of charge by Bowtech Archery, Leupold Optics. You should see the new range finding binocular that they announced at SCI today. They weren't, I thought it was coming out at SHOT Show, but it came out at SCI today. I've been using a prototype of them for the last two years. <whistles> Sweet. Uh, Onyx Maps, go to onyxmaps.com and use promo code Randy and you're gonna save 20% on all of their app products. Gohunt.com, their insider service, which is a lot of the application information we use when we get ready to draw tags. Go to there, go to onyx or go to gohunt.com, use promo code Randy when you sign up for the insider and get $50 of mad money in their gear shop. And then we've got Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. Go and buy any of their calls at Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls.com. Use promo code Randy, save 15%. Also brought to you by Tots, Tight Spot Quivers, Ripcord Rests, and Black Gold Sights. All right. Anybody applying in Wyoming this year? Everyone raise your hand if you're going to apply in Wyoming this year because that deadline is due January 31st. What's today? The 8th? No, the 9th. So you got 22 days to go to Wyoming Game and Fish website and sign up for your tag. Yeah, this is the year. This is the year. I only have one point in Wyoming, but I think, I think I'm going to draw. Yeah, the New Mexico regulations came out today. We'll get to New Mexico in a couple, probably sometime in February or March. Huge changes in New Mexico this year. Big, big changes. So you don't wanna know what that is. Uh, oh, wow, someone says they already applied for Wyoming. Holy smokes. But a couple things you need to know that's new in Wyoming this year. As you may know, in Wyoming, you gotta send in the entire tag fee at the time of application. Well. In addition to that, this year they're adding a 2.5% credit card transaction fee. So if you apply for elk in the lower price, what's called the regular draw, it's going to cost you about an extra $18, $17, $18, something like that is your transaction fee. If you apply in the special draw, the more expensive one, it's going to cost you, I think, almost $30 extra dollars as the credit card transaction fee. The other thing that's new in Wyoming this year, I went in last night and I did my Uncle Larry and, no, who did I do? Camera guys, oh, and my son Matthew. I was trying to buy a point for him because we always pick the, bon the preference point feature. Come to find out, you can't add that to your purchase th at, during application season now. You have to wait and go in and actually buy your point as a separate transaction sometime in the point period, which is July through October. So, two big changes that you want to know about there. Ooh, look at this. There's all kinds of questions coming in. How am I going to answer all these, Dan? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Someone, Chase, asked, Randy, which states allow you to only buy a bonus point without buying a hunting license. Uh, Montana, Colorado, and Wyoming, I believe, come to mind as the only three. Remember, New Mexico and Idaho don't have a point system, so that makes life a little easier there. Boy, I wish I could get more of these to come up. What am I doing wrong here? Huh. Hey, Dan. Yes. What am I doing wrong here? Why are not all these comments coming up on my Facebook page? You must be doing something wrong. I got this new Mac. I can't figure it out. 
<laughs> Tim says, hey, that's not the Randy room. No, this is Gray Thornton's room from the Wild Sheep Foundation. Really nice of them to let us come out here and hijack their Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't know who we're going to, well, I, I think once we do tonight, and we're going to do a lot about Wyoming, it'll probably be late January before we get a chance to do another Elk Talk Live, but Wednesday nights, that's the time we do it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hans Olo, anyone feel like Randy is one big walking go hunt ad? Yeah, I am this time of year. Definitely am because if you don't, if you don't have this information, you're leaving a lot of opportunity on the table. So, uh, count me in. I, I, I plead guilty to that. Whoa. Danny says he drew Wyoming with zero points last year. Whoa. How cool is that? Uh, when scouting for elk in the field in Montana, how early do I start scouting? Um, I try to scout as close to the actual season as I can, because let's say I have a November, early November hunt. That's gonna put me in late season mode. It doesn't do me much good to come in August because the elk in August or September are gonna be in a completely different location than I'm gonna find them in, my, in November when I'm hunting. So if possible, I try to come to, if I got three days, that's even better yet. I try to have two days of scouting before the actual hunt. So my scouting is as close to the season as I possibly can do it. The further away from season you're there, maybe you're learning the roads, where the gated things are, everything else. But for me, I wanna be there, have knowledge or, or scouting information that is super applicable to what's going to be happening when I'm out there hunting. So, uh, what was that? Um, so, Fresh Tracks Films Close, a mule deer hunt is up on Amazon. Yep, it is there. Uh, so Mike says, go hunt, help me get my, help me go antelope hunting while keeping my preference points. It's things like that. Why I'm such a big fan of it. I, the, so, all right. Would you, what, what would you recommend as my second state to apply in if I'm an Arizona resident? So if you're an Arizona resident, it depends on what your budget is, I would probably say Wyoming. And, and here's why. Let's, let's walk through if you only have a $1,000 budget. And I know that's, for some people, they're going to say $1,000 to apply for tags. That's crazy. So let's say that is what your budget is. Some people have really big budgets, but here's what you could do with $1,000. You can apply in Wyoming before January 31st, especially if you're an Arizona resident, it's not gonna cost you much there. So apply in Wyoming, you're gonna to have to send in a total of about $800 for the regular price draw. Okay, maybe you don't draw, you find out in late February from Wyoming, I think this year it's February 21st or 22nd, you get your money back in early March, now you can use that same pool of money to apply, say, in New Mexico. So in New Mexico now, you, you buy the refundable non-resident license. And if you don't draw, you ask for your money back. So with that same pool of money, you can leverage both Wyoming and New Mexico in the same year. If you were to draw Wyoming, well, your, your pool of application money is kind of gone for the year. So you probably would pass on New Mexico. My point is, by planning this and using a strategy to it, you're gonna be able to apply in more states than you probably think you could. So, wow, I can't read these. There's just too many of them. Oh, oh, someone's going on, Bryce is going to the Henry Mountains for a bison hunt on the 15th. Uh, I've not seen much on the south end. It looks like you harvested your bison on the north end. What's your recommendation? Uh, boy, that's a hard one. I've not been there during this period, so I don't really know where they're gonna be. I harvested my bison Probably if, if you split the range in half, it runs north and south. I was about in the middle, um, but I was up really high. I don't know. I, I suspect they'll probably be down lower by this time of year. And when they get down lower in that pinion juniper, I would get out on some of those big fingers up high and I'd be glassing down in there. That's what I'd do. I'd, but again, I've, I, I've, I've not been there this time of year, so I really can't say. Um, <laughs> uh, so someone says, I want to take my daughter elk hunting with a bow. Would you do Southwest Colorado or Wise River, Montana? Um, I'd probably do somewhere else. 
uh, versus any of those. But if those are your two choices, hmm, depends on how good a shape you're in and, and what kind of hunt you're looking for. Southwest Colorado is steep, nasty, gnarly country. Well, the Wise River country in Montana is not nearly as rugged as Southwest Colorado. So uh, let's see, Randy, thoughts on Wyoming implementing a bonus point system, pluses and minuses. Do you have all day? Uh, Perry, I'm gonna answer a few questions. I sat on the Montana committee that came up with our bonus point system. That was in 1998 and 1999. We met for over the course of two years. I was the youngest person on that committee by 15 years. And I know now looking at all my gray hair, you'd say, wow, those guys must have really been old if you were the young guy. But back then, uh, People knew I applied in all these other states, and I think that's why I was asked to be on the Montana committee. Not because I knew anything, but I just was someone who did a lot of it. Uh, we came up with all kinds of proposals. We ended up with a bonus point system. Uh, I advocated that we should keep at least half of the tags out of the bonus point system so that for new hunters, there would still be a lot of random tags available. That got shot down. Um, I also advocated that for certain things that required, that had draw odds of, I think my proposal was less than 20%, that if you drew a tag, elk, deer, antelope, whatever, and the odds of that tag were less than 20%, you had to be on some sort of waiting period after that. So that people couldn't draw multiple tags over a short period of time, that got shot down. Uh, we implemented our system and what I would caution any state that's thinking about implementing a bonus or preference point system, what you think you're buying today is not what you're gonna end up with three, five, 10 legislative sessions from now. So what we had in Montana has already changed. Now we square our bonus points, which was never part of the discussion. In fact, the committee brought it up and we said, no, that's dumb. But our legislature got in there and tinkered with it. A couple of years ago, there was a legislative session where someone passed a bill or introduced a bill, it didn't pass, that would have allocated a portion of the moose, goat, and sheep tags to people over 60 or over 62, something like that. It, the point of this is these point systems get to be expensive, they usually change over time, and they become even a bigger point that people fight over. So if I could roll back the hands of time, I would say Montana, don't even do uh, a point system. If I lived in Idaho or I lived in New Mexico, I'd say don't do a point system. I'm sitting on more than 15, in some cases more than 20 points in a lot of states in the West, and I would walk away from those points tomorrow if they got rid of their point systems. That's how I feel about point systems. There's always somebody trying to change the law, work the angle, and, and think about it this way. With point systems, the pie is only this big, right? There's only so many tags. If you implement a point system, it's to push more of the tags over to one group of, of people, it doesn't matter who it is, and that comes at the expense of either existing people or new people coming into the system. And it just, it makes life way more complicated than it needs to be. But it's a reality that we, we have to deal with, so that's why we go over it. I, I don't see these states getting rid of their point systems, but those of you in Wyoming who are residents, if I was you, I'd be putting the brakes on that. But that's my personal opinion. A lot of personal opinion when you ask me a question, right? Uh, let's see. Someone asked, do I worry about uh, moon phase in a September archery hunt? Um, I would try to hunt in a, anything other than the full moon, but a lot of times I have to hunt no matter what the moon phase is. So I don't really worry about it that much. Um, would you ask how to make a left-handed rifle, please? Sorry, Jeremy, I don't think they're going to because then you have twice as many skews, everything has to be in left-handed and right-handed, all the dies, all the everything else. I know they've talked about it and maybe they'll do it someday, uh, but right now I, I don't see it happening. Um, uh, let's see, high powered binos or spotting scope for glassing. If I'm just sitting there and I'm glassing hillsides, I probably have my Leupold 15 by 56s. Or if it's some place where I'm hiking way back in there and I don't want to carry a bigger bino, I always have my 10 by 42s or 8 by 42s around my, my chest and my, my harness. 
I will glass with those. And if I really want to get dialed in with them, I'll sit down and I'll put them on a tripod. And even a 10 power bino on a tripod, you can be really effective. So, uh, let's see. Is it getting harder to draw non-resident licenses in Montana? Yeah, it is. Um, it's just getting harder and harder and harder. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jeremiah says, Randy, it's a funny fact that during your bison hunt on the Henry Mountains in Utah, you helped push my cousin's trailer. It even made the show, yeah, on our way out. If your cousin, what was his name, Dan? Chris what? Kerrigan. Chris Kerrigan, if that's your cousin, we were pushing his trailer because he was going down a really muddy slope in front of us, and if he got stuck, we weren't getting off the mountain. And his group of people were some of the best guys I've ever run into out in the woods. They were great guys. So, uh, 308 or 7mm 08. Depends on what I'm hunting for elk. I'm going with the 308. Other things, maybe a 7mm 08. If you think about it, they're both the same case, other than the 7mm 08 is neck down to the 2.84 versus the 308. So, pretty much the same exact case, just the diameter of the bullet that's in there. Both. Two, two of my favorites. No, no doubt about that. Uh, let's see. Someone says he will not answer that question. What question is it? Oh, <laughs> where are you headed to in Arizona? I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> uh, we, we get in trouble. Uh, people, if we don't tell people where we're at, they think we're purposefully holding out on them. And if we do tell people where we're at, which we seldom do, or if they find out where we're at, then they're mad at us. Why are you telling the whole world? So... Uh, we usually don't share units or locations or areas, just out of respect for the other hunters who apply or hunt there. So, um, <laughs> whoever said that is right. I'm not going to tell that. All right. Now we got a whole bunch of these. Uh, wow. We got some, uh, we got some upset people over here. What, what did we do there? Somebody's. Some folks are having an argument out on our Instagram page. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. What state do you recommend for the first person who's never hunted elk before? Uh, Arizona, Wyoming, or Colorado. Probably be my the places I would go to. Um, let's see. Disabled veterans hunt. What percentage do you need to be to qualify? That depends on the state. Every state has different regulations. Uh, I'd go to that state and see what it is. Uh, what was the score of Matthews, Wyoming elk? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't really have, uh, I, one, I'm not an official scorer and I don't like to just throw numbers out because we all know the person, oh yeah, that's a 360 bull and if an official tape gets put to it, it's 320. Uh, that happens a lot. So uh, I do have a friend who's offered to come and score it. He's a, a an official score uh and everyone who's looked at it people i really trust i think it's somewhere between 345 and 350 ish but i don't know that uh true someone wants tax advice i don't give tax advice <laughs> uh any tips for hunting wyoming pronghorn on units with a lot of blm checkerboard yeah if you go out to our Amazon channel or our YouTube channel and search for a Wyoming pronghorn hunt that I did, uh, it would be, let's see, I think season three of Fresh Tracks. And that, that was in a serious checkerboard area. It's an easy tag to draw and it's a pain in the butt to go there and see so many antelope on the, the private. Well, I saw this really big buck on private and in the rut, you know how antelope chase each other and run around? I waited there four or five hours, pretty soon. Another buck chased him over onto the BLM. 7mm08, how a handshake, boon and cracker buck. So my advice would be is go and drive and scout and glass and, and do everything. And know that probably three out of every four bucks you see, you can't go after. But if you see one you really like, don't give up on it. Have your Onyx system with you. Uh, you cannot, at least for me, I cannot hunt those checkerboard areas without my Onyx system. Uh, 
And when I have my Onyx system, I know, okay, that buck over there, he's only 200 yards onto the private. He's only got to come 200 yards and I could have a shot. So just hunt like you normally would, but adapt the mindset that, hey, I'm not going to be able to chase everyone I see. And when you have your Onyx system, you absolutely know with confidence where you stand and where you can hunt. And you know where that buck is standing and you know when you're going to be able to shoot. So, uh, let's see. Do I recommend hunting elk with a 243? I wouldn't recommend it. I know people do it, but it would be low on my list of, of suggestions. Um, <laughs> best units. Awful lot of stuff about best units. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not going to give you... Uh, uh, that precise of information. That's what all of our platforms, whether it's our Amazon channel, our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, all this stuff is designed to give you information and teach you how to do your own research. These tools that I talk about, Onyx, it's a huge planning tool for us. Go Hunt, huge planning tool for us. We have a big talk forum, a big hunting forum called Hunt Talk. Out there, there's people sharing information. Maybe not out on the threads. Maybe they're sharing that information in private messages to each other. The whole idea is let's figure out the, the system, the manner of how to do this. Because if someone tells you or just says, go here, you haven't learned much. But if you have to do your own research and work through it, you've learned a lot. And you're going to be able to apply that time and time again. And pretty soon, you're going to be so good at it, you're going to be giving people advice. So... Uh, let's see. Someone says, wish I could hunt with Randy. Well, um, we just had a, a sweepstakes that ended, uh, last fall and that person, I got a hold of Ty and we're getting ready to apply him in Wyoming for 2019. If he doesn't draw there, we're going to apply him in New Mexico. If he doesn't draw there, we're going to go to Colorado. Um, there's a good chance we might do another sweepstakes later this summer, August, September, October, something like that. So don't, don't count it out yet. You might get a chance. Um, let's see. Choo, choo, choo. Both my daughters get to start hunting deer next year here in Montana. What rifle would you recommend? Um, I would get a 7mm08 and a Hawa. They make these small lighter frame rifles. Um, shoot lights out. I think I've got four Hawas and a 7mm08. That's what I'd be doing. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. Hey, Dan. Yeah. Did anyone bring the Pintler pack with us? No. Oh, man. In case you haven't been following, out on our YouTube channel, there's a contest going on. We started it yesterday with us and Go Hunt. Go Hunt gave us six Mystery Ranch packs to give away. Yeah, six Mystery Ranch packs that are going to get given away. And you got to go out to our YouTube channel. There's a video out there with all the rules, but I'll give them to you real quick. You got to be a subscriber to our YouTube channel. You got to be a subscriber to the Go Hunt YouTube channel. And you have to leave a comment on the video that we have on our channel. And you'll see, I think this morning there were 2,000 comments already or something. Um, but oh, that's all you got to do. It doesn't cost you anything. You're gonna, somebody, six people, are gonna win a new Pintler, brand new Pintler Mystery Ranch backpack. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Go to Go Hunt's YouTube channel and subscribe. Put a comment on the video and you're in. So, how did I forget to do that? I'm, hmm, yeah. So, Andrew says, I stopped carrying a GPS once I, once I purchased Onyx, right here. That, it's on this phone and I, this is a lazy confession on my part. I still carry occasionally my old traditional GPS because in some of the units we go to, I haven't got around to loading my tracks and waypoints over to the Onyx system from my GPS. I know that's kind of embarrassing, but it's, so if you see me out there with my old GPS, that's why. Um, Oh, what's your recommendation for the best handheld GPS that is compatible with Onyx? Mm, I don't know anymore. I haven't bought one for so long. Uh, like somebody said, I would just go with my smartphone and get their app system because their app, not only can you do it on your phone, you can do it on your laptop, your desktop. It's, if you've seen that whole series of videos we did with Onyx last summer, called e-scouting. I think there were 12 videos. 
that shows you how powerful that system is and it's right there on your desktop or right there on your laptop so um <laughs> connor says what advice would you offer for someone interested in switching careers and getting into wildlife and natural resource management or conservation <sighs> it depends on what career you're switching from uh, plan on having a lot of competition for that job plan on spending more time in offices than you probably expected you would plan on the politician politicians telling you what you can do each day or you can go the route i did be a cpa or be some other profession that gives you way more free time and just go enjoy that with extra free time that that's the route i took oh and then it says p.s a mutual friend is pre preparing quite the meal for your arizona visit uh i was excited to hear what he's making for y'all and where y'all will be hmm well, I'll look forward to eating whatever that is, I guess. I wonder if it has something to do with javelina. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Dan, you guys, oh, Monday. Is that when the deer hunt from Arizona goes up? Yeah. Dan back here and Marcus and our buddy Wade were down there last month rifle hunting for coos deer and they went two for two. How was the coos deer, Dan? In the video, it looked like you guys were just drooling with yeah I, I gotta shoot one this year there's just no way i i gotta quit i should just quit using that you know i i use this sneak technique and i'm not very sneaky i need to figure out a better way to do it uh let's see which way do these instagram comments go up or down i have no idea I think they, go up. they go up so i should scroll down like this way oh. or should i scroll that way I don't know. There's so many of them, I can't get them all. You got any that I'm missing? Um, that you think? Somebody wants to know when we're going to be hunting with the Hunting Public Boys. Oh, guess what? Funny. We're going to Arizona. We invited the Hunting Public guys to come and join us in Arizona this month. And they're coming. They're going to hunt with us for a week. Those guys, the Hunting Public, they have a really cool YouTube channel. Uh, we've known Aaron and those guys for quite a while. Uh, they have a YouTube channel that is all about hunting public land in the Midwest. That's not something you hear a lot about. So they're coming to Arizona. They're whitetail experts. They're going to show us how to get these coos deer down in Arizona. So hopefully that works. I'm going to be taking notes. Uh, <laughs> someone says, sorry for freaking Marcus out in the parking lot at the Sonoida Fairgrounds at Quail Fest. <laughs> Ryan said that. Ah, heck with him. Marcus, he's a good troop. He's a good guy. Um, uh, when are you going to take a day off? Uh, Jana, I don't know that I'll ever get a day off. I, the guys, Dan would probably attest that I run on less sleep than the average person. Um, but I love what I do, so I'm, I'm lucky. How many people get to live in the greatest country in the world, the United States, and get up every day and say, I love what I'm going to do today? That's Randy Newberg. That's what you call being blessed. I am the most blessed, lucky person you're ever going to meet. So, uh, so when is our Sitka deer hunt going to be on YouTube? Well, it's a film. It's going to premiere in some film festivals hopefully this fall or this spring and then we're working on having a premiere in bozeman yeah all kinds of goodies giveaways well i shouldn't say that because if it doesn't work out and we can't coordinate everything everyone's going to be mad at me but it's a really cool film uh and then once it does its kind of film touring thing then it's going to be on our amazon channel which if you have amazon prime you, I hope you know you can watch us for free on Amazon Prime. Super high quality viewing experience. Fresh Tracks, Leopold's Fresh Tracks with Randy Newberg. Uh, so that film, it's called Reindeer. It will go through all these film tours and then it's gonna go to Amazon. And then probably, I would guess sometime in May or June, it's gonna be out on YouTube. So hopefully that answers that question. But we're really lucky to have uh, great friends who helped us on that. Randy, any bird hunting? Uh, well, Dan, how was that duck bacon at the shop? Not bad. Not bad. I, I did it. 
my son Matthew was in town and uh, we always do our duck hunt when he comes to town for Christmas. And uh, so we did that, but we didn't film it. That's our one hunt of the year where we just say, you know what, we're, we're not filming this. So, uh, am I going to be in Salt Lake City for the Hunt Expo in February? Uh, this year I have contracts that require that I be there. Um, usually I've not been there, uh, but I will be there, I think, on that Friday and Saturday this year. So, I cannot keep up with all of these comments. Randy, why is your hat always crooked? Because I got a funky head. I got, I got this great big cassava melon, and I, my wife says I always pull my hat to, my, to the right. So, she says, she asked me the same thing. When are you going to put your hat on right? So, funny that she's not the only one who says that. <laughs> uh, Jeremy asks, I want to get into bow hunting. What's your entire setup? Bow, sight, rest, and release. I wish I had it with me. Uh, I have Bowtech. Uh, this year, I'm, I have uh, an SS and an SR6. Uh, and my setup, I have tight spot quivers, uh, black gold sights, and ripcord rests. So mine is, I got a 29 inch draw length. Uh, I have it set at 60 pounds. I shoot full metal jacket arrows, bone broadheads. And I'd say my whole arrow setup when I measured it was right at 495, something like that. So, uh, Randy, do some more shows with Corey. Craig asked that. I was just down in Idaho with Corey and we were doing a bunch of podcasts and he has promised me He's promised me that he is coming to Montana to hunt with me this year. We'll see. The guy, is, he's in high demand. I'm not. So it's way harder for to get him on my schedule than for him to get me on his calendar. So uh, please come to the Washington State Sportsman Show. You know, I'd like to do that someday. I've also been asked to come to a Portland one. I guess that's a really big one. Uh, but I haven't uh, had a chance. Oh, someone's asking, what is, what would you say is too heavy for a mountain hunting rifle for elk? Um, I don't know. It depends on the, the cartridge that you're using. You don't want a super lightweight rifle if you're a 7mm mag or a 300 wind mag because there's a lot of recoil there. So it really depends. I know guys who carry great big Lapuas out in the hills, like 338 Lapuas. And if you've ever seen one, it takes almost one person to carry that and one guy to carry his pack. Uh, so if I said eight pounds, some people would say, oh no, I carry something way heavier. Or someone would say, oh, I would never carry an eight pound rifle. I don't know. For me, somewhere in that eight to nine pounds is about where I usually end up. So. Uh oh. Why did I sight in my 6.5 Creedmoor at 200 and not 100? Uh, because it's a very, sh uh, the ballistics are a very flat shooting cartridge. And it's that one rifle we have set up for a little bit longer range shooting. And I just wanted a zero at 200 rather than 100. So I had my CDS dials from Leupold etched to have a 200 yard zero. So not any real big reason to it. And just why, why I did it. Hey, Joe, you joined. Joe, you got any muskrat or beaver problems this year? Let me know. I'm, I'm looking to do some muskrat and beaver trapping videos again. Uh, Shale asks, when am I coming back to New Mexico Unit 36? You help me get a tag and I'll be there. <laughs> oh, I like this one. Ryan says, only 223 days till elk season. Not that anyone's counting, right? Uh, so I, I'm curious as to why there's so few Wyoming uh, questions. Oh yeah. Oh, someone just really good point. Scott, I, thanks for bringing this up to remind people. Arizona, if you have kids in your house that are old enough, I think age 10 is the limit where you can start in Arizona, $5 for their non-resident youth license. And I keep hammering that because here's, here's how it worked at my house. When Matthew was 10, I started applying him in Arizona. By the time he was 18, he had enough points he could go on any of the late rifle hunts. So since then, he's already burned his points one time in Arizona, and now he's back up to, I think, seven 
elk points in Arizona. He's got 18 sheep points, 18 deer points, 18 antelope points. And we built a lot of those back when he was a kid and it was only a $5 youth license. Go do that. If, yeah, just go do that. Um, all right, someone keeps asking about coolers. I use Orion coolers and here's the ticket. Go to oriancoolers.com and starting in 2019, they are giving anyone who uses promo code Randy, they're giving you 20% off when you check out. How's that? 20% off an Orion cooler for the whole year, all year long. Promo code Randy, oriancoolers.com, go there. Um, let's see. Oh, what was that one? <laughs> Some, <laughs> uh, Mm. Well, they can't, sorry folks, they're coming through so fast, I don't get them all. Randy, how's your body healing up? Uh, probably healed up too much. My wife's been cooking too well. I bet you I've gained seven or eight pounds since I got off the road. Uh, maybe not quite that much, but it feels like it. So I must be healed up pretty good. Uh, is, mm -hmm. What's my opinion on hunting black bears with dogs? You know what? I get asked a lot of these opinions about baiting for this or dogs for that. I say whatever that the citizens of that state want, go for it. I, I don't think it's my place to give an opinion about what they do or how they do it in other places. I mean, I got a friend in South Carolina down there, it's legal to hunt deer with dogs. And if you did that somewhere else, the place, you know, everyone would just be up in arms. But that's part of the culture. That's part of their hunting tradition down there. So I try not to get involved in those discussions. That's not a punt. Well, I guess it's kind of a punt, but I just don't think it's my position to weigh in on what they do. In Montana, we can't bait bears. We can't chase them with dogs. We can only spot and stalk them. I like that. I'm good with that. I go to Wyoming or Idaho, I go to Idaho, they can chase them with dogs. They can bait them. I'm fine if that's what they want to do in Idaho. Doesn't really matter to me. So, <laughs> uh, do I ever varmint hunt? Yeah, I do. Uh, I, in fact, I, there was a time when I was going to college that between snaring bobcats and trapping and shooting coyotes, I made more money than what I made working at the sawmill. So I've, uh, I got a lot, a lot of, uh, fond memories of doing that. I wish I had more time to do some of that stuff, but I just don't have quite the time as I used to. Um, using the ammo that you do, do you have many pass through shots while hunting elk? Um, yeah, I have quite a few of them actually. Um, especially if we use the Nosler E-tip, which is a non-lead ammo, uh, those are just penetration. Oh man, amazing. Uh, depending on the distance and where you hit with the uh, Nosler partitions and the Nosler acubons, if I hit in the lungs, I'm going to have a complete pass through. Now, sometimes if it's a long distance and I angle and I hit a shoulder blade either on the way in or the way out, maybe I won't have a complete pass through, but, uh, I'm going to have serious blood trails and it's going to be easy to find them. That's for sure. Uh, where's a good place to buy a Howard rifle? Um, any of your retailers, another place, if, if you live in a place that doesn't have a big retailer, uh, Davidson's has this thing called the gun genie, like a genie in a bottle. Um, if you go there, and type in uh, the select, okay, I want a Howa model 1500 308. It'll tell you, and you type in your zip code, it'll tell you every dealer in your area that has a Howa rifle and what their price is for that rifle. Davidson's Guns, the Gun Genie is what it's called. Really, really cool. Um, that's, how, that's how I'd go about it if I was having a hard time finding one. Um, hmm. I like when people say, what's your opinion? Um, I'm looking, Mike says, I'm looking at hunting, a Wyoming hunt in the thoroughfare area in 2020. Thoughts on that area? Thoughts are it's all wilderness area. So you're either going to have to hire an outfitter as a non-resident, or you're going to have to go with a, a resident who can act as your guide. Either way, 
if you hit her right, you're going to have a really good hunt. Really, really good hunt. Um, it's a great spot. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> There's a lot of people who are really wanting... They, they, they want to know where we're hunting in Montana, Dan. Should we tell them? But what if I told them the wrong place? What if, what if I kind of did a head fake there and, and gave them something that Good. sent them to the wrong place? They'd figure it out. Uh, what Sitka is your favorite apparel slash camouflage? Um, depends on where I'm hunting. I really like the new subalpine pattern that has a lot of greens in it, and the greens and browns. Uh, if I'm hunting rock and shale, like when we were sheep hunting in Alaska this year, we did the open country. Uh, both of them are an optifade pattern. If you ask me what my uniform is from about October 1st to the end of season, I'm going to have a merino base layer, and I'm going to have some other type of layers in between. And notice I'm saying layers, layers, layers. My outer layer is always going to be my uh, jet stream jacket. It's got a very great weather uh, DWR, weatherproof DWR on it. It's warm, it's got a hood. And if it's really, really cold and really windy, I'll put a little Calvin Light vest or jacket, which is a puffy layer underneath that. And then in my bottoms, if it's, uh, usually we're hiking a lot, so I usually carry my, we called them long johns when we were kids, right? My merino bottoms, I usually carry them in my pack. And I just have my Timberline pants on. If I get up there and it's super cold or super windy and it's like, man, I got all sweated up and it's just, you know, 10 below, I will actually take my pants off, put my merino bottoms on, and then put my pants back on top over them. But usually it's not as cold as, it's not that cold where I have to do that. So, Josh, that, that's my uniform uh, normally. How many miles does your Titan have right now? I think when I looked the other day, I was at 28,000. <laughs> yeah, I know some of you are saying, you put that many miles on in here? Yep, I, I put a lot of that on there. Uh, love the Elk Talk podcast, you guys are great. Thanks for listening to that, uh, glad you like it. Um, you know, the, the first few podcasts we're trying to get people to understand where we were going with it, what we were doing, why we had certain sponsors involved. Now we're just blowing right through that and getting right to the meat of it within two or three minutes and we're getting serious about it. So, uh, were there any deviations in the number of applicants for Wyoming after they raised the tag prices? You know, I don't know the answer to that. I should, but I don't. Um, hmm. where are the dilly bars uh, over at Dairy Queen that way hey and, and this is another thing thanks to all of you who have been sending me Dairy Queen cards I don't know how you get my address and maybe you looked me up in the Bozeman directory or something but for Christmas I got I, I'm so thankful and so appreciative of all of you but I have a stack of dilly cards dilly, uh, dilly cards Dairy Queen cards this tall. Like, those are the ones that came from Christmas. And then I have another stack that Dairy Queen gives me to hand out to youngsters when I'm at the Dairy Queen shop. So, yeah, really nice that, that people think of us and, and send us stuff like that. But if I eat all those Dairy Queens, I don't know what kind of shape I'm gonna become next elk season. I'm, I'm gonna be in a bad way. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, how do you pack your rifle on your packs? Uh, you'll see if we're doing long packs, uh, in Mystery Ranch has, the, the way all the straps work on Mystery Ranch packs, you can set your pack or your rifle right in this seam of your pack and it just rides perfectly. Uh, sometimes if we're hunting, you'll see we're using trekking poles and we have a gun bearer that mounts to the hip belt of our mystery range pack and then right here in the, the shoulder strap, it's got another clasp that goes around the, the forearm of the rifle and so it's riding kind of up like this. Uh, that's called the gun bearer. A lot of, there's a lot of them on the market now. Um, some people even make their own gun bearers. So, Have I ever done any uh, Utah spike hunts? I have not. Um, 
<laughs> Again, people are asking units. Uh, I appreciate that you're asking, but we're not going to give unit numbers. This, whether it's in Colorado or Montana or Wyoming, it just it's uh, probably not going to do it. Uh, <clears throat> so, with your feet being probably one of the most important things, absolutely agree. Uh, in your hunt, what socks and boots do you favor? Uh, I have Kennetrek Mountain Extremes and Mountain Guides. And right now I'm taking my old man shoes off. Some people say I wear old man shoes right here. Does that say Kennetrek? Oh, it says Kennetrek right here. Uh, Kennetrek makes absolutely killer wool socks. Um, they have some that are uh, wool, some that are synthetic, some that are a blend. Uh, I wear them as my work socks. Uh, even at the office, I'm wearing them. So what I would tell people, we did a video out on our YouTube channel of how to keep your feet warm. There's a lot of little things you can do to keep your feet from getting cold. The number one thing is don't let your feet start sweating. How many of you leave the house or leave camp in the morning and you drive for 30 minutes in the truck with the heater on? Right away, your feet have sweated. Sweated heavily and you probably don't even know it. Your feet don't have a chance that day. The other thing I do is I carry a spare set of socks in my pack. So when I climb up that mountain, I've been hiking for three hours, guess what? Every part of your body is starting to perspire. When I get up there, I'll take all my layers off, get really dried off really good, put layers back on. Sometimes I will swap my socks off, uh, swap my socks out right off the bat. And that will keep your feet way, way warmer. Uh, so, Kenetrek boots, Kenetrek socks, love them. Been using them for, can't even remember, but way before I started these platforms, I, I bought my first pair of Kenetrek boots. Um, would I rather hunt Montana or Wyoming? Uh, depends on what you're asking, uh, what species, whether it's big game, small game. If I'm a bird hunter, give me Wyoming all day, every, or uh, Montana all day, every day. If I'm hunting antelope, uh, give me Wyoming. If I'm hunting whitetails, give me Montana. If I'm hunting elk, just across the board general, probably give me Wyoming. If I'm archery hunting elk, maybe give me Montana. If I'm hunting mule deer, not even a question, give me Wyoming. Uh, if I'm hunting waterfowl, Montana. So there's trade-offs. It's whatever you like to do. Um, I like them both. <laughs> uh, Someone says the general tag in Wyoming is a really good option. Yes, very, very good option. So here's how Wyoming works, right? Uh, well, maybe, maybe some don't know this, but by statute, Wyoming has to give, I think it's 7,250 non-resident tags. It might be 7,200, I think it's 7,250. So if 4,000 of those tags are allocated as limited entry tags in this limited entry draw, then the remainder, the thir other 3,250 tags, have to be issued as general tags. Non-residents still have to apply for the general tag, but that's how they end up at, with this pool of general tags. And when it's a general unit, those are the units that residents can go and hunt as an over-the-counter tag. But they're really good hunts. You get to hunt archery season, September 1st to the 30th, and if you don't fill your tag then, you can come back in the rifle season, most of those rifle seasons start October 15th, somewhere in there, and run till close to the end of October. The general hunt in Wyoming, I was just looking at it last night. If you're in the lower price regular draw, I think with two points, you have about a 65% chance of drawing. With one point in the expensive draw, I think your odds were 97% last year. And then in the random part of the draw, uh, in the lower price draw, your odds were, I think, 14%, and in the higher price, your random draw odds were 26%. Some of you might say, what do you mean? So here, quickly, here's how Wyoming's work. Uh, they, whatever the pool of tags is for non-residents, 60% of those tags go in the lower price regular draw, and 40% go in the higher price special draw. And then out of that 60% or that 40%, they say, we're gonna take three-fourths of these and we're gonna allocate them based on preference points. Who has the most points? The other one-fourth, we're gonna just do a random draw. In other words, if you didn't draw on the preference point side, you get thrown over into the random draw and you may draw there. So 
That's why Wyoming has some pretty complicated things of, of how it works. And the strategy articles at Go Hunt explain all this. They have diagrams, graphics. It's, it's worth every bit of it. So what you just heard me say there in about a minute and a half, you probably could, uh, well, not could, you would have that in way, way greater detail of not just that, but a whole lot of other things if you had to go hunt insider. So uh, let's see, what's the story of the mount on the wall above you? You know, I don't really know. This isn't my office. This is uh, a really big mule deer up here, um, but it's, it's not mine. I wish it was. <laughs> hey, Zach. Zach's asking, who's shooting the biggest buck in Arizona next week? Are you down there, Zach? Uh, I hope I'm shooting the biggest buck in Arizona next week. No, here's what I'm doing this year. So if you've ever hunted these little, all right, I'm going to call them cows deer, even though the true pronouncement is cows, like cows with a Z, cows deer, we'll call them coos deer. A year and a half old coos deer has these little antlers. They're, they're like that tall. And you know how they, they have these little deer called a dick dick, D-I-K, D-I-K. I'm going to shoot one of those this year and call it a Sonoran dick dick and try to pawn it off as a new species. But when I was watching Dan and Marcus eat that uh, coos deer on the video that's going to release on Monday, and actually all next week is Arizona coos deer hunting on our YouTube channel, I'm like, I got to shoot one of those. I don't care if it's just a little year and a half old dick dick. I've passed on two of them in the last two years that I could have shot. And that was stupid. I'm out there with a bow, a stick and a string. I'm trying to spot and stock one of the wiliest animals in all of North America. So it's, it's definitely, uh, definitely going to happen this year. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, let's see, what do I think of Sitka clothing? I must think a lot of it because back before I, st I had a, an arrangement with them, I was paying for it at full retail. No, no discount, full retail. Me and my guest hunters, I, we'd go down to Sportsman's Warehouse or Cabela's or wherever, and I'd pay full retail. Even though other companies were offering to pay me to use their stuff, uh, that, that's how much I think of it. So yeah, now starting about five or six years ago, I have a relationship with them and I continue to use their stuff. But, uh, oh, Jacob wants to know if I trapped any scrats this year. Scrats is a Canadian term for muskrats. Uh, I haven't, but we have it on the calendar. Dan's going to cook them. I'm going to, I'm going to catch them. Marcus is going to film it. Wait, you're having a baby. Your wife's having a baby about it. They, Dan's wife's having a baby here pretty soon, so I think he's going to get out of the scrat session. So it'll probably be me and Marcus. But yeah, we're we're going to get after it. <clears throat> uh, someone says they're waiting on their W two. Tax season is upon us. Well, I don't know what to tell you there. I don't have your W two. Uh... <laughs> so many people have some of the funniest comments. Uh... <laughs> Uh, have I thought about applying for Northeast moose, any moose? What would any, any, that initials any, that's, that means Nebraska. Hmm. No, the only place I, I apply for moose is Montana, uh, sometimes in Alaska, uh, Utah, sometimes, a lot of times in Idaho. That, that's it. So, um, boop, boop. Do you recommend gathering points for Wyoming antelope or go for the easier to draw units? Uh, depends on what you mean by easier to draw. I don't see myself ever having more than three antelope points in Wyoming. In fact, I'm trying to think the last time I had more than three points in Wyoming. Because I, I just want to go. So I look at the odds and I say, wow, yeah, it's not one of the great units according to all the research services. But at least I can draw and I'm going and I'm going to get to eat some antelope. So I, as far as building points, uh, I'm not big on building points. So, uh, Randy, what are the best over the counter tag states surrounding Colorado? Uh, the, 
Utah is does have an over-the-counter option. Most people would say it's really crowded and a lot of the units are spike only, so that's not that good. Wyoming is never over-the-counter for non-residents, nor is Arizona or New Mexico. So I guess that covers all the elk states surrounding Colorado. There aren't any of them that are over-the-counter. If you want to skip one state and head through the corner of uh, Utah and get to Idaho, uh, they're an over-the-counter tag state. <clears throat> um, I, I'm trying to get to Idaho this year. Um, we're we're gonna we're gonna try. Everyone asks us when you guys come to Idaho. This should be the year. Uh, I hope so. <clears throat> <laughs> Someone says, I'm not big on building points either, but it seems like the states disagree. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the states disagree. They make a lot of money on these point schemes. Have I ever hunted Africa? No, I haven't. I haven't hunted anywhere other than uh, uh, North America. So, uh, opinion on Arizona late archery elk. You know, I was thinking about applying for the Arizona late archery elk tags, which are in November. I thought about doing it this year, but we already got a busy November calendar, it looks like. So if I don't draw a December late rifle tag in Arizona this year, I'll have four points next year. I'm gonna try to draw one of those late archery elk tags in Arizona next year if I don't draw this year. Everyone tells me, don't waste your points, buddy. It's, it's a tough hunt. Yeah, I'm sure it's a tough hunt. It's November with a bull, but it'd be fun, so. Uh, what heavy cold weather jacket would you recommend for a late season Wyoming hunt and why? Uh, I, I went through that earlier. My outer layer is going to be a jet stream jacket and then I'm gonna layer up with other layers starting with merino and then some synthetics and then I'm gonna really puff up. Uh, we call them puffy coats with a Kelvin or Kelvin light. So, uh, Amazing layering system that they have there. Um, let's see. Boy, there's a lot of them here. Is the Timberline pant from Sitka too warm for early in the season? Uh, yeah, early in the season, I'd probably go with the, um, the Ascent if it's really warm or the Mountain pant. Uh, the Timberline is, a, you're gonna be pretty hot in a Timberline in September. Um, update on Uncle Larry. Is he going to hunt that same awesome unit that Matthew saw 10,000 bull elk in? <laughs> so this is really cool about Wyoming. I, I want to give Wyoming a couple plugs here. Wyoming came out with a law a few years ago that passed their legislature that said, if you draw a limited entry tag and you cannot make the hunt for medical reasons, you can apply and have your doctor fill out all these forms, or I think it's four pages, and you can send it in to ask to have the tag reserved for the following year. So those of you who saw Matthew's elk hunt in Wyoming from 2018, Uncle Larry was supposed to join us, but because of all of his chemo treatments, he's been six years in this clinical trial, he's really having some messed up heart issues. And his cardiologist said, you're not going anywhere that's gonna get your heart out of whack. So he wasn't able to go, uh, but Wyoming, their license review board did authorize that, okay, we'll reserve your tag for 2019. Big kudos to Wyoming for something like that. Uh, and so if Larry's heart gets better and, and stops flip-flopping and, and give, giving him grief, we're hoping the doctors give him the permission to go. So uh, one other thing, and this came up the other day, and this is about Wyoming. Every year when you apply in Wyoming, it says, do you want to add a donation for the Access Yes program? I always add a donation. I did last night when I did one of the applications because the number of times I've had amazing hunts, specifically antelope hunts, through their hunter management areas and their walk-in hunting areas. If you go to their website, there's a button that says public access. And these are programs where Wyoming Game and Fish, they use donations from hunters, from nonprofit groups, to go and pay landowners to open up their lands to public hunting. And usually it's not so much the public land or the private land that you're hunting as much as it is it gets you to big chunks of public land that otherwise would have been blocked off. Wyoming, you guys have a great program. You really have a good program in that, whether it's elk, deer, antelope. 
when you're doing your research in Wyoming, be thinking about that. And on your Onyx system, right here, it will show you on the map where all of those are. Now understand some of the HMA, hunter management areas, you have to actually apply because there's such high demand for the hunts on those places. You have to apply for a permission slip, almost like in a limited entry draw. The walk-in hunting areas, there's just designated parking spots. You park and it's just like it implies, walk-in hunting and off you go. So uh, two really, really good things there that, that Wyoming does that I hope they keep doing it. Um, and here, all right, little secret. Wyoming, if you look in their booklet, right, you download the booklet off their website. A lot of these units have a little asterisk by it that says access is difficult in this unit. That's just about always where you see us hunting because one, we're really good with our OnX system. And two, a lot of those units have walk-in hunting areas or hunter management areas. There, there's some antelope units that, that have amazing amounts of walk-in hunting access and the draw odds are really good. I scratch my head. Why are, well, why aren't more people applying here? But please don't, don't start applying. Leave those tags for guys like me. <laughs> but, so, uh, <clears throat> let's see. What bino above the bino harness are you currently using? Still the FHF? Yep. Paul lives here in Belgrade, Montana, about six miles that way. Uh, makes a great product. I've been buying his stuff forever, uh, still using it. So um, let's see, we got to remind people to go to our YouTube channel, go to the Go Hunt YouTube channel, subscribe to both, leave a comment on our YouTube video so you can be one of six people who win a Pintler, a Mystery Ranch Pintler backpack. Got that off the list. We got to remind people Bowtech, if it wasn't for Bowtech, they, they came up with how to uh, distribute this across all these platforms. They make this possible. Leupold Optics can't even wait. Now that, now that the new prototype binos that we've been hiding for, you haven't really got to see them, have you, Dan? I don't think so. Brian Call stole them from me before Dan came to work from us. Uh, but for two years, I've had these really cool range finding prototypes. They released they announced to the public today. Can't even wait to get my hands on them. Uh, Leupold makes this possible. Onyx Maps, right? We've been talking about their app system here. Go to onyxmaps.com. Use promo code Randy. Save 20%. Go hunt. We keep talking about them, right? This is the time of year where you hear us talk about it so much because it's that important to getting a tag, right? If you're going elk hunting every year, you better have a tag. If you don't have a tag and you're going elk hunting, <laughs> don't tell me about it because you're going to be in trouble. Point of that is you're not going elk hunting if you don't have a tag. So that's why we hammer in the, in the application season the two tools we use, Onyx and Go Hunt. Both of them have promo codes. Randy, go there and use those promo codes. Save some money. Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, save 15% when you use promo code Randy. Uh, what else we got? Ripcord. Uh, black gold and tight spot all those make this possible all those companies um, the if you want to get uh, a text notification when we're getting ready to go live we try to do it on Wednesday nights but sometimes we're on the road we have to do it a different time text Randy R-A-N-D-Y to 64600 64,600 so just text R-A-N-D-Y to that number and you're off and going uh, before we get to our last questions here, if you can, if, if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, I hope you'll go out to Amazon Prime and type in Fresh Tracks and watch us out there. We spend a lot of time and energy putting these out there and they're not the 20 minute TV shows. Yeah, we took the ones back when we were on TV and put them out there, but these new ones that we've been doing the last couple of years, they might be 25 minutes, they might even be 45 minutes. These are true stories of the hunt, of how it happened. And the viewing experience on Amazon is way, way better than TV. No commercials, high def, I mean, full everything. So hopefully you'll go there. Hopefully you'll go to our YouTube channel, Randy Newberg Hunter. And we have two podcasts. If you're into podcasts, we have two of them. Hunt Talk Radio, 
which I'm the sole host of Hunt Talk Radio, brought to you by Leopold. And then the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation has a podcast that Corey Jacobson and I host called Elk Talk. So you can find those on Stitcher, on iTunes, uh, all kinds of other places. So, all right, am I holding people? I'm sorry, Dan, I, I feel like it's been so long since we've done this that we owe the audience a little more. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Instagram ended. What Instagram ended? What happened? I thought I just said it's hour. Like oh, you can only do an hour? What kind of communist misfit operation is that? Russian communist, something or other. I can't believe it. Greg Miller, dilly dilly. I'm <laughs> I, I got to quit being this way. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm out in the weeds here. <laughs> uh, let's see, someone just said something. What was that? Uh, Randy Tucker says, I've watched every episode on Amazon twice already. You're my friend, man. I owe you a Dairy Queen if I ever see you somewhere. Uh, let's see. Which odds for non-resident is better, Montana or Wyoming for deer? Your odds? It depends on what you're looking for. Wyoming has a lot of their deer regions that have leftover tags for non-residents. Montana, uh, usually all of our deer tags get sold out in the first draw. So I would say if you're looking for just the general area tags, Wyoming has better draw odds. Uh, and even in most of their limited entries, it's, it's going to be better. Um, Adam asks, how are your seat covers holding up after all those miles you've put on your Titan? Pretty good, eh, Dan? What do you think of those seat covers, huh? Pretty slick. Yeah. Headwater seat covers. Paul Linso, Three Forks, Montana. The best seat covers in the world. Guaranteed, you can take that to the bank. How are you liking the new Titan, Dan? No, I didn't. No, Dan wants one. <laughs> and Michael loves it because Michael claims he's a sweat hog, and that, that Michael is a sweat hog. So it's got seat heaters in the back and seat coolers in the back. So Michael's always back there turning down the heat. So he's like sitting on a block of ice or something. But it got us out of some really, really sketchy spots. Hey, Randy Tucker, you said you live in Williams, Arizona. And your DQ is closed until spring. Yeah, it is. I have a ton of friends in Williams, Arizona, and every time I stop there in the winter, your Dairy Queen is closed. It's right next to your Safeway. You share the same parking lot? What a ripoff operation. My, my good friend, Julie Pritchard, works at Safeway, so I always stop in there to see her, and I think I'm gonna go get a Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen's always closed. Buy that joint in Williams, and would you keep it open all year round? I mean, uh, yeah. Not good. I can't even believe that somebody would have a Dairy Queen and not have it open year round. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, we just finished all of your shows on Amazon. It was kind of sad because this was our family bonding time. <laughs> One of the things we're doing this year that's different than last year in 2019, we're accumulating every episode of season seven and we're going to put them all out there at one time. So you can binge watch it. Last year in 2018, we kind of dribbled them out, right? We did two and then we did two and then we did four more and then we did two. Well, we want to see how much people would watch and come back and watch and come back if we did it all at one, you know, the whole season at one time. So it'll be interesting to see what people really think about that. So. Uh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> someone wants to know what we ended up with wrestling names, Dan. <laughs> That's a YouTube video. I, I'm sorry. I, I, we talk about, oh, someone wants a Nissan promo code. <laughs> You're going to the dealership. Yeah, I want to use promo code Randy and get 20% off. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> We got to have one more really good one. Um, <laughs> Brent says, man, I'm struggling. I haven't had a blizzard for at least an hour now. <laughs> oh, that sounds like an answer I would have. Uh, all right. Here we go. Woo. 
If you have only whitetail gear and backpacking gear right now, would you spend the money to upgrade your boots, your pack, or your binos for a hunting trip in Montana? Um, if that was going to make or break whether or not I'd get to do the hunt, no, I'd go with what I have. But in Montana, I probably, if I had binos, I'd, I'd, I'd probably keep them and I'd upgrade my boots and my pack before my binos. And I say that with a little bit of trepidation because there's a lot of hunts where your binos are gonna be absolutely imperative. But if you're hunting public land elk in Montana, you do not wanna skimp on your boots because those are your wheels, right? You're putting on 10, 12 miles a day in steep, ugly, nasty, uneven country, rocky country. A lot of people come out here with just run of the mill boots, not just in Montana, but throughout the West. And they hunt these places hard and their feet are killing them. Their boots get tore up. Their feet get tore up. Boots are serious, serious gear when it comes to mountain hunting, especially backpack hunting, because you're, you're carrying a backpack. And if you're like us, I I'm the wimp of our crew. I only have about 25, 30 pounds in my pack, Dan and Marcus and Michael, all their cameras, extra tripods, batteries, everything else, they're carrying 35 to 40 extra pounds. You do that with crappy boots and you're gonna know it. And the same with your pack. You carry a heavy load all day long in a cruddy pack, your shoulders hurt, your back hurts, everything about you hurts. Um, so it's hard for me to not say upgrade your binos, but of those three, it would be boots, pack, binos. But if you have the budget, upgrade all three of them, for sure. Um, <laughs> oh, you people are just way too funny. Uh, someone says, Randy, I'd love to see you do an Ibex or Marco Polo hunt. Um, it certainly is something that's always on my mind, those kind of hunts. But what we do is we focus on North American native species. And so... I would say you're going to see us stick to here. Um, not that I wouldn't want to go do those things. Um, man. So, Antelope in Wyoming, first time hunter looking for a guide. Call my buddy Eli Grimmett at Pronghorn Guide Service. There's not even any question if you're looking for a guide in New Mexico, uh, Arizona, or Wyoming, Eli Grimmett is your guy. Pronghorn Guide Service is what he operates. Not even a question. So, uh, Randy, come to the, our sports show this month. I'll buy you a DQ. Nope, don't need to. Hey, Randy, what's the loophole promo code? <laughs> Everybody's the, so it, this is there is no promo code for loophole. There's no promo code for Sitka. Okay. Sitka called me one day and said, Randy, what's the deal? People are trying to use your name as a promo code. I'm like, folks, I I don't know. I. So I'm telling you, there is no promo code for Sitka or Leopold. Don't try to use it. <laughs> and then someone says, everything, just use promo code Randy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, am I doing any public speaking near Bozeman coming up? Uh, I don't think so. None that I'm aware of other than if we do our, if we're able to pull off a premiere for our film, it's gonna be here in Bozeman. Uh, hopefully sometime in March, that would be it. And then I'm the MC for the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation banquet, April 13th. Uh, I'll be doing a bunch of appearances in Boise in early May, uh, in Park City, Utah in July. So that's the extent of where I know I'll be. So anyhow, remember folks, Wyoming deadline is January 31st for elk. Don't miss it. And if you do miss it, whatever you do, be paying attention because the next deadline we're gonna talk about is a really important one and that's Arizona and that is February 12th. So next time, have your questions ready for Arizona. That's what we're gonna talk about on the next Elk Talk Live session. Thanks for watching. Appreciate all of your support.